In our next lesson on how enzymes work from chapter 6, we want to look at the chemistry of catalysis. That is, how do enzymes influence the Gibbs free energy change in a chemical reaction? First of all, it's important to recognize that they cannot change the direction of a chemical reaction. They cannot influence the equilibrium or balance of their, that reaction. More on that in just a moment. Instead, they function by lowering the activation energy, the E sub A, and that speeds up the reaction. In our example here, we have molecule AB reacting with molecule C, and that gives us the products A and BC. In other words, we've transferred group B from A to C. In order for this reaction to occur, the two molecules have to get close enough to react, and there are always some repulsive forces there. That represents an energy barrier that we must overcome if we're going to form those products. This is depicted in an energy diagram in the lower right here. On the x-axis, we have the reaction coordinate. That simply tells us where are we in the progress of the reaction. Our Gibbs free energy is on the y-axis and of course that's increasing as we go up the axis. And so we can see what the energy level and is and how it changes as we proceed through the reaction. On the lower left we have the reactants, molecule AB and molecule C, and on the far right the products A and BC. The halfway point between them represents our intermediate. This is our transition state and that would be at the top of our energy hill here, depicted by this double dagger. It's as if our group B is halfway between A and C. Notice it's at a very high energy level. That means it's very unstable, and because of that, the lifetime is very short, less than a picosecond. This is our energy hill. This is the barrier that represents the repulsion of the forces as these molecules come together. The, so this is our activation energy, or E sub A. It's also more commonly denoted as the delta G double dagger. Remember that double dagger is our transition state, and the delta G is the Gibbs free energy change. Notice that it's the change associated with the top of our hill here, our transition state, and our starting point here of the reactants. That's our delta G double dagger. And that represents the amount of energy our reactants must have in order to reach the bottom of the hill on the other side and make products. So the higher that energy hill is, the fewer molecules we'll have that will have enough energy to climb the hill and make the products. What we want is some way to lower that energy hill so that we can make more product in the same amount of time. Now if you're at the top of that hill, here's our transition state here, and as depicted here, we could easily roll either way down the side of that hill. In other words, we could reach that transition state, and remember that's very unstable, and instead of forming products, we could slide down the other way and go back to reactants. So this is important to recognize that not every reaction gives us product. It could go either way. In this idealized case, as you can see, the energy of our reactants and products is the same, so there's really no preference to go one way or the other. This rarely happens. Usually a reaction favors either reactants or products, as we'll see. And that's depicted here. So in our energy diagram in the lower left, we see here our, our reactants and our products at our lower energy level. So the delta G of the reaction, and remember that's always products minus reactants, would give us a negative value. And just as we saw before, if delta G is negative, that represents a spontaneous reaction. We released energy, we didn't have to input energy. On the far right, we see the case of a non-spontaneous reaction, where the products are at a higher energy level than the reactants, and so we had to actually input energy to make that happen. That would be a positive delta G. Notice that the delta G of the reactions is simply the energy level of the products minus the reactants. And that will be the same no matter how high or low that energy hill is. It has nothing to do with the transition state. It's simply the energy level of the products minus the reactants. 
Enzymes function by lowering that energy hill. So in red here we have the uncatalyzed reaction. Here's our unstable transition state intermediate, X double dagger. And you can see a very high energy hill here, so very few reactants would actually get to the top of that hill and make it down to the other side to form products. So that's the delta G associated with that change, is the delta G double dagger of the uncatalyzed reaction. Enzymes function by lowering this energy hill, and that's pictured in blue here. So here's our uh, X double dagger, our intermediate, and you can see it's far less unstable. It's more stable, and therefore we have more molecules that can get to the top of that energy hill and make it to the products here. So the delta G of the catalyzed reaction, that is the delta G double dagger of the catalyzed reaction, is much less. Now you'll notice it did not change anything with regard to the final end of the final energy of the products minus the reaction. Remember, that's the delta G of the reaction. It does nothing to change that. All it can do is change the delta G double dagger, that energy hill. And this is what we mean by it can't change the equilibrium. It can't make a spontaneous reaction non-spontaneous or vice versa. All it can do is make it more likely that the reactants will form the products, that is it lowers that energy hill. In our next lesson we want to look at some common catalytic mechanisms and we'll find that enzymes often work with other helpers, other cofactors, and we'll see how that functions.